Hi there, this is Dave and welcome to another crowdsourced video detailing my Discord server's top 10 best JRPG Black Mages. As many of you know, I set up my Discord only a few months ago, but I did think that it would be fun to get everybody involved in the video making process. And it's really taken off in the past few weeks as we had a total of 45 submissions. However, the entire server voted and we were able to narrow that list down to a manageable top 10. So, please keep in mind that this isn't necessarily my opinion, but the opinion of the best Discord server around. Come and join, achieve greatness, and be part of the fun as this series continues throughout the rest of the year. And with that, let's hit the limit break and start shooting off some fireballs. Number 10. Nominated by Dingus99 and receiving 40 total votes is Paula from Earthbound. Of the four little tykes, Paula is probably my favorite character to use in battle. She's just so powerful and efficient, using PK fire to clear out rows of enemies, or just blasting bosses to smithereens using PK freeze on individuals. But she's not one note. Magnet allows her to steal PP, and she has buffs like PK shield and offensive up to boost up her companions. Not to mention her debuffs, and even prey which can cause a random, but mostly useless, effect in battle. Out of battle, she's super sweet, helping out at the preschool her parents run and never leaving the house without her trusty teddy bear by her side. She might only be one party member, but she definitely packs a punch whenever she joins up. Number 9. Nominated by Professor Olsen and Karateka Oot and receiving 42 votes is Jessica from Dragon Quest VIII. Well, at first glance, you might think that this sex pot's just another caster, but there's more to her than that. She's able to use whips, knives, swords, and staves, so she's got an incredible weaponry selection, and with her ridiculously high agility, she can just nuke the battlefield right out of the gate with all three lines of spells, or support the party with her buffs. Then, to make her even more special and versatile, she gets the amazingly useful, and I do think overpowered, hustle dance, which heals the entire party for free. She's not just along for the ride either as a pretty face. Her simple revenge story becomes much more later on, and she even gets some more characterization in the 3DS remake, but I'm not going to spoil that here. Number 8. Nominated by Casual Tom and receiving 43 votes is Palom from Final Fantasy IV. While Rydia might be the obvious choice here, she's really classified as more of a summoner, than a black mage. So, I'm going to be going with the true black mage of the game, our favorite trash-talking twin, Palom. Apart from merely specializing in powerful attack magic, he's able to weaponize his own arrogance via his bluff command to double his magical attack power, and his big mouth can write a check that his black magic can actually cash. Especially when he combines his power with his goody two-shoes sister and unleashes the devastation of twin magic. Mobs or girls don't stand a chance when Palm's wielding his fire rod. Number 7. Nominated by Zawa113, the hostess, TT Deridank, and receiving 45 votes is Rita from Tales of Vesperia. Rita is not only sassy and smart, but she knows that she's the total package. This could make her come off as kind of a cold hearted bitch, but when your broken spells become even more broken with her over limit, She's just unstoppable. With huge area of effect clears like Tidal Wave or smaller scale nukes like Violent Pain, Rita makes a great core to any party with huge damage and utility. Pair that up with abilities to reduce casting times to a simple blah blah blah, and she'll have racked up enough hits and damage to nearly be able to go into overdrive again before it even ends the first time. She's super cute too with her little girl crush on Estelle, and her real crush on Carol. Number 6, nominated by Gels and receiving 48 votes, is Veronica of Dragon Quest XI. I loved and let's play Dragon Quest XI on my channel when it first came out, and for those of you that watched it, it should come as no surprise that I love this little pint-sized bitch. Not only does she have the right amount of sass and comedic humor, but she's just incredibly useful in battle while well, her sister is just not. Veronica always has something to say, and she's not afraid to give you her opinion, 
or to just shove a fireball up an enemy's ass. Towards the end of the game when she leaves for story reasons, she's definitely missed and she's always a welcome addition to any team. Number 5. Nominated by Karateka U and receiving 49 votes is Luca from Chrono Trigger. Whereas all of our other black mages could cast spells of any element, our resident inventor and best friend Luca is simply a pure fire mage. Even whenever she doesn't have magic, she can turn her gun into a flamethrower to roast enemies, and then she gets the power of weaving fire magic to incinerate the enemies with the best magic stat in the game and Flair, which has the best multiplier. She's not just some abandoned sidekick either. Due to her interest in technology, she is the one that actually sets the entire adventure into motion, and she is the one that discovers the game's main threat, Lavos. Her family dynamic is sweet too, with her doting father inventing all sorts of gear for her, as well as going back in time later on to save her mother. Number 4. Nominated by Poopro420, Allcast, Razundi, and Travis NC, and receiving 61 votes, is Donald Duck from the Kingdom Hearts series. Don't get between Donald and Mickey, because this bitch will cut you. He's all business. I mean, the only reason that he's slumming around with Sora in the first place is to follow King Mickey's orders. He's constantly telling those two dunderheads to quit meddling and quit helping other people out and just focus on finding Mickey. And Donald does this by letting his magic do the talking, blasting the crap out of everyone in his path. Donald is not there to heal. He is there to kick ass, take names, and cast Zeta Flare. But Donald also has a pure heart, and he displays how being a friend can be a struggle. At first, he's torn between following the Keyblade or following Sora, so when the Keyblade is lost, Donald initially follows the King's orders and leaves him behind. But as we all know in these games, the power of friendship conquers all, and eventually, it's all set right. Number 3. Nominated by Serena Mistress and receiving 73 votes is Magus from Chrono Trigger. Here we have our only optional character on the list. Poor Magus, who was displaced from his original time period and sent thousands of years into the future. Coming from the Kingdom of Zeal, his magical prowess is second to none with access to all four elements, and with his wicked scythe, he can hold his own as an attacker as well. When you first encounter him, he's the titular villain, and much later on in the game, he joins up to slay Lavos and to help get a certain somebody back. At the end of the day, he's just misunderstood. And honestly, who wouldn't resort to any means necessary for survival? Magus sure did, and he did it with style. Number two, nominated by Tom D, Caleb the Dragoon, Oppositional Defiance, and Jacob, and receiving 78 votes, is Lulu from Final Fantasy X. If ever there was a black mage that looked the part, it has got to be the goth-inspired Ice Queen Lulu. In a tropical world like Spira, this one-of-a-kind black mage stands out for two obvious reasons, so here's reason one and reason two. Oh, and her all-black clothes, of course. While all party members hit unique weaknesses, only Lulu spells can really pierce defense and be useful against all different types of fiends, not just those susceptible to magic. Lulu also acts as the loving big sister role for Yuna, despite her cold demeanor early on. Throughout your journey, she does warm up to Titus and even marries Waka in the much maligned sequel. Number one, nominated by Drubles and Rosterick in receiving 120 votes, is Vivi from Final Fantasy IX. Vivi is so perfectly archetypal in design and his quest to find himself as one of the most tragic stories in gaming. Despite having only eyes and body language to glean emotion from, all the scenes that he's involved in hit you right in your heart. He is a character that I feel should be involved in everything that happens. He's the everyman, an unsure, shy child with no idea where he's going or why he's doing what he's doing. And while the other party members constantly tell Vivi how powerful he is and how important he is, he's still just unsure of himself and full of emotion. But here he is, crown number one, and of course, he probably doesn't want the spotlight on him, so he'll just be like, oh, I won? And then adjust his dorky little hat. Well, that's it for the top 10 best JRPG black mages as decided by my Discord server. 
We do have quite a few more honorable mentions though, such as Dee Sinina from Breath of Fire 2, Cyrus of the Octopath Traveler, Angela from Trials of Mana, Genus, Jade, and Arch from the Tales series, Luke of Suikoden, Mallow from Super Mario RPG, Bianca of Dragon Quest V, Lysithea from Fire Emblem Three Houses, Millennia from Grandia 2, Rune of Fantasy Star 4, Ivan from Golden Sun, Domingo from Shining Force, Lemia of Lunar 2, Papoy of Secret of Mana, Mera from Dragon Quest IV, Lazard from Valkyrie Profile, and Rainy from Radiant Historia. Who are your favorite black mages and why? Let me know in the comments, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you want to take part in future class ranking videos, come and join the Discord channel to make your voice be heard too. The link to it can be found in the video description as well as in the comments. I do hope to see you there. You can also consider supporting me on Patreon for early access videos and behind the scenes photos. And as always, if you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.